And welcome to the March 2024 Tableau Public Tug, everyone. Let me share my screen again. We're here to answer the question, why did you do that? How did you do that? And the most important question of all, how did you make it look so good? Thanks for joining us today. Our hosts are Agata Ketterick, Preeti Loda, both are Tableau Public Ambassadors, and myself, Eric Howard, I'm a Tableau Users Group Ambassador. Agata first discovered Tableau in 2016 and hasn't looked back. Agata's Wordle Viz placed in the top 15 in the 2023 Iron Viz qualifiers, and she has many Viz of the Days. As a data visualization consultant at Lovelytics, Agata loves helping clients create insightful and informative dashboards. Thank you for hosting today, Agata. Parithi is a true global citizen, a multilingual, and has lived on three continents, enriching her work with diverse perspectives. Her American International Students Viz has over a million views on Tableau Public, a true accomplishment. She firmly believes diversity is not merely a checkbox, but a catalyst for positive change. Thank you for hosting today, Preeti. Excited, Our, Eric. Thank you for introducing. You're welcome. Our guests today are Karen Mahardy, Lindsay Betzendahl, and Yaroslav Tamchala. Karen will be in our spotlight, giving us the latest rundown on the Data Plus Movies Challenge. Lindsay will show us her Jim Carrey viz, and Yaroslav will show us his Star Wars versus Star Trek viz. As always, we'll finish with a swag drawing, so let's get started. We're lucky to have Karen Mahardy with us today. She is the Senior Marketing Manager for Tableau Integrated Campaigns, specifically the manager of the Data Plus Movies campaign. Take it away, Karen. Oh, Karen is not presenting. I did see them briefly join, but uh, they had dropped, so. Oh, she was there and I promoted her. She's still there and she's in presenter mode. There she goes. You're still muted and your video's off, Karen. All right. All right, finally. <laughs> Yay, Karen. I'm like, where are the buttons? I don't see them. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. And that's a great introduction. Um, I'm just going to get started here with uh, a, little, a little something for you to watch. <laughs> Get ready. Something is coming. Relax, guys. It's just Tableau's Data Plus Movies Challenge. Enter the Data Plus Movies Challenge today. Create and share a viz that tells the story of the data behind the movies we love and get a free t-shirt. Hey, I'm not the only one hearing this, right? No, you are not. <laughs> uh, pretty fun, I have to say. One of my favorite things about doing this, uh, this whole campaign. Uh, let me get to my presentation here.
Okay. Well, thank you so much for watching that. And I hope if you have not uh, done the challenge yet that you take the opportunity to do so. So when coming up with the idea for Data Plus Movies, it was really um, derived from this opportunity that we saw Tableau had not launched a new campaign for our analyst audience since 2019. And it's kind of left our customers like you hungry for a way to connect with Tableau in a fun and engaging way. And also we saw through some market research that there was de decreased awareness about Tableau and prospects were looking for an inspiring and easy way to try uh, tie our product using relatable data. So we wanted to address all these things. And so we did that uh, with this campaign. Uh, we looked back to the last time we ran a campaign like this in 2019, it was called Data Plus Music. Um, and it was a collection of visits, uh, essentially, um, on a landing page and um, uh, also some data, music data that was provided. It won the American Advertising Award for Digital Advertising and also had a really amazing article in Forbes. Um, and uh, But it was a little different than what we are doing now with Data Plus Movies. I'll go into that in a minute. It's the idea of doing movies as a topic because of the broad appeal. Everybody has a movie they like or an actor they're interested in or a uh, genre or whatever, whatever. Lots of people can talk about it. Um, we wanted to keep it fun because we wanted people to feel like they wanted to participate in their free time. And then we also wanted to stand out and differentiate uh, from other programs that we have going on. So I uh, reached out to IMDB and we created a collaboration uh, to create Data Plus Movies where I licensed all of their movie and TV data um, for two years. So we have the opportunity to work with it for that amount of time, which has been pretty great so far. Um, for as far as creating awareness, we created a landing page similar to what we did for Data Plus Music. We featured um, amazing visits by some of you. Uh, Lindsay, hello. <laughs> There's your viz you're going to talk about later today. Um, but the other thing that made this uh, particular uh, program different from Data Plus Music is that we created this challenge. And the one thing that was different about Data Plus Music is there, it wasn't easy for somebody who didn't know how to use Tableau to participate. And so I worked with Andy Cockreave, who I'm sure you all know, uh, to create a starter kit that created, uh, that had step-by-step -step inst instructions, a dashboard that was already connected to the data set so that people had an easy way to start and to learn, to learn how to explore the data and create a viz and get a free t-shirt. Um, so people have been having a lot of fun with that. And I, I've seen visits from people with like all levels of skill, um, which is really amazing. And I've also seen visits come from all over the world. Even though this data set is in English, I've been surprised about how many people have picked it up and run with it. Um, the community react reaction has been really, really awesome. Um, lots of really great uh, posts on social media, people sharing their t-shirts when they get them or sharing their visas that they've created. A uh, couple of really great quotes here. I loved the huge data set from IMDB. It was a lot of fun to dig in and explore various lines of thought. That was from Samuel Parsons, who's a group analytics cloud lead um, at BizTory. Um, and then uh, I'll read this one from Lisa Trescott. Having such a robust and clean data set to work with is a rarity, and it really allowed me to focus energy on being creative. I ended up creating one of my favorite visas uh, in my portfolio, and I had a blast doing it. I anticipate exploring this data many more times in the future. And so our stats today are also reflecting like how much fun people are having with this data. We've had so many really amazing, and creative, and beautifully designed visits uh, uploaded to Tableau Public. Um, so far, 553 visits have been uploaded um, and tagged with Data Plus Movies to Tableau Public. Of the top 20 most viewed visits, uh, they have 150,000 views. If I could total all of them, I would. It's just a manual process. So <laughs> I'm just looking at the top 20. 150,000 views just since uh, we launched in November. Um, to give you some perspective on that, for Data Plus Music, to date, we have about 230,000 views. And so that those have accumulated between 2019 and today. Um, so we are well on our way to reaching that and to um, 
to surpassing the Lit Plus Music as far as views. This is uh, this uploads we've already surpassed as well. Um, we had about uh, 80 visits that were uploaded within the six months that that campaign ran, ran. and so uh, there are so many more that have been uploaded for this um, campaign. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the visits we love. Um, and I'm going with a little bit of an Oscars theme uh, because of the uh, the last uh, because of the um, Oscars this last weekend. So let's jump into some of these. I really liked this uh, as far as like best picture, it's hard to pick best picture in my opinion. So I could, instead of showing you a best picture, I wanna show you the movie night generator, which is solving so many problems for me when I'm not knowing what to watch. I love that I could come over here and go, okay, I wanna watch, I'm an adult. I don't really care about the length of the movie today. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, I want to be, uh, how am I feeling? I need a good cry. I'm feeling nostalgic. Maybe I'm feeling nostalgic today. Um, what's your preferred movie popularity? Um, I'm gonna say surprise me. And then how old of a movie do I wanna watch? I'm gonna say maybe I wanna watch something from the millennium era. And so um, let's see what we've got. We've got the Lord of the Rings, um, one of the highest, uh, um, highest, um, uh, liked movies. I'm saying that all wrong, but you know what I mean. Um, we've got the Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's see what's this one down here that's not uh, got as many likes. A uh, deck of cards. I've never heard of that, so maybe I want to watch that. So this this uh, viz I really like for that um, purpose that you can just uh, find all kinds of movies that you maybe haven't heard of. Um, for best director, I really wanted to show folks this Christopher Nolan viz. Um, that I really like that was just created. I think it really does a good job of showing um, some interesting facts about his career. Um, the, the budget and gross um, for each of the movies that he's done, you can see, you know, like here for Oppenheimer, uh, the budget was 100 million and it's grossed 952 million so far, which is pretty great. You can also see over here in this column, that uh, the Oscar nominations and means that that particular movie um, had got has got. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And then also down here, you can select a movie to see more details. So if I want to look at Inception here, and I love the viz and the tip here, where you can see the different uh, nominations for that um, movie and Oscar wins. Uh, but if you click on it, it'll filter the part below where you can see the different actors. Um, that appeared in the movie as well. And you can, uh, let's see, can I click and, nope, can't click and find out more. But I really liked how this was put together just to give a really quick, easy snapshot at his career. Best actor, um, I really like this Robert De Niro viz. I think it's just so beautiful um, and also really easy to see uh, his career as well. These, um, these spikes that are coming out of this uh, radial viz is shows the ones uh, movies that he's been either won or nominated for uh, a best a best actor award. Um, and then as you go into the center of the um, of the viz here, you can see all of his movies divided by genre, um, and uh, kind of dig in and see like, oh, okay, well maybe there's some um, movies in here that I've not seen of his. Um, so it's kind of interesting to kind of explore his whole um, uh, vast career um, of movies. And then for Best Actress, Meryl Streep. I have to say, if you're looking for a topic to um, do a viz on, actresses. Um, of all of the vizes that have been submitted, and this is just anecdotal, I haven't totaled it up, um, but the, the vast majority of them are on male actors, male directors, male, uh, lots of male. Um, and so it's it's hard to find a, a really good viz on uh, a single actress or an actress's career. There are a few on uh, groups of actresses, um, like ensembles that are really great. Um, so if you're interested, um, I, I think that's a really good um, way to go. Also, I do agree with some of the comments here. Yeah, Oscar's so white and male. Um, also, another opportunity is um, actors of color, actresses of color, directors of color. There are a few, um, but not as many. But hey, I've got to love the folks from India and Pakistan. They are going crazy on uh, movies. Um, 
one from uh, Bollywood movies. Anyway, so let's go into this Meryl Streep fizz. She's had 62 films, 28 films as a lead. Uh, the, her first film was in 1981. This, this is just so easy to read and to understand her career. Um, uh, also here, how many no nominations she's gotten, Oscar wins, BAFTA, BAFTA noms and wins. And then her salary is really interesting here. Her salary has uh, been in the millions, and you can see for each picture what her salary was. This one for Ricky and the Flash. I've not heard of that, but she got $5 million for it. Uh, what's this one up here? It's complicated, $7,500 um, of a box office, a worldwide box office of $224,614,000. Um, I'd love to see more information on pay or visits on pay and um, and um, how much profit people make off of movies. Um, and then down here you can see uh, movies that she's been featured in and how uh, they've made hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, Mamma Mia being the one that has uh, grossed the most so far with uh, over over uh, 580 million dollars. So um, pretty cool this. Um, that is me on my presentation. I hope I haven't gone over time. Awesome. <laughs> so how hard was it to get the data from uh, IMDB? Uh, you know, actually getting data from them uh, is pretty easy. They license their data. Anybody can go and, and do it. Um, if you are interested in licensing their data, I'd be happy to share the link where you can go and find it. Um, but they, they do do that, but, and they deliver it in, a, in an easy, very easy way for us to um, purchase and track in invoices and download and all that stuff. So that was great for us. Um, was it a mortgage board of features that you wanted or did they pretty much have- uh, Oh, your, they your have- play? everything and so we have the full data set um that we were able to license now i uh when we prepped the data for data plus movies uh andy did exclude some of the data because of the size of the data set um so um you know if you're looking for information on um i i don't know like uh, the the key grip or the <laughs> you know like the lighting person or whatever it, it might not be in there <laughs> okay um so Very yeah cool. from that perspective it was really really easy all right well thanks for the update we appreciate you being here today yeah well thanks everyone i look forward to seeing more visits preethi and yaro are you ready to go we are awesome yes, we are. Uh, and also, just so you know uh, that, Karen, I'm excited for the Data Plus movies uh, uh, visits. I am in that last push where you have to wrap up the viz. Somehow it takes longer than to build a viz. Uh, tell me in comments if you struggle with such thing or not. Uh, hi, Yaro. Uh, thank you for joining okay. us. Uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction to Yaro and hand it over to him to walk through the beautiful biz he has created. Uh, Yaro began learning Tableau in January 2023, uh, and uh, most of his visits are on his Tableau public profile. Uh, he has built these visits by participating in to the community projects such as Makeover One Day Monday and Workout Wednesday challenges. Um, he says that with participating in each of the makeover one day, Mon oh, I cannot say Monday for the life of me today. Mm -hmm. It's Monday. Yes. Um, with each makeover Monday, his aim was to implement a new technique uh, that was uh, his way of learning Tableau. And I absolutely love this way of learning, Yaro, just uh, implement it and build something new and you publish it out there. And he says that this approach has helped me helped him acquire Tableau skills before joining the data school. Uh, take away, Yaro. Looking forward to hearing more from okay. you. Okay. So let me share my screen. Thank you very much for introduction. Mm -hmm. And thank you for the invitation. <clears throat> right. So now, can everyone see my screen? Okay. Yes, we do. Nice. So as I said, uh, uh, I worked with, uh, as a data consultant uh, with the information lab. I did the data school uh, before I was in compliance, account management. I, has, uh, I have some experience in e-commerce, marketing, uh, 
a little bit of web design and uh, my hobbies are uh, music, especially movie soundtracks. I always enjoy going to the museum or theater and I love traveling and uh, photography. So that's about me. So we will talk about today uh, how I did get involved in the Data Plus Movies Challenge. Uh, uh, how did I choose my design and why is sketch so important? And uh, how did I retrieve the data and how did I prepare them? And what steps did I take to build the base? So we will go into Tableau for a minute or so. All right, so how did I get uh, into the challenge? I read it out, uh, I read about it uh, on LinkedIn. It was one of Andy Codgreaves uh, posts. So I gave it a thought, but uh, I was uh, in the middle of the data school program and I kind of knew that I wouldn't have time for it. But fortunately, what we do at the data school is that we last week of the training uh, of our training is uh, we call it dashboard week uh, when we create a dashboard every morning and we are presenting our findings, our analysis in the afternoon. And for our final two days of the data school, uh, we uh, got, uh, we were, it was very generous because it was usually only one day. So we got this challenge, Data Plus Movies. But there was one more additional request uh, from our coaches and it was make it a uh, uh, static infographic. So it can be printed and it will tell the same story without any interactivity. So we have this huge data set. I'm thinking what to do. We have two and a half gigabytes data, I believe. And my first thought was, as mentioned, about Christopher Nolan's films. But at the time I was, uh, I was playing with it, I think there was no uh, Oppenheimer. So I was like, this is no go. So another thought was, uh, I would like to see how, ch how the choice of composer uh, affects the rating of the films of, uh, the, of one director but it seemed like I, I wouldn't have time for it. So I just let it go. But in my head, I already had uh, John Williams and his music to Star Wars, for Star Wars. And uh, I thought like, okay, would Star Wars be so cool without John Williams music? And why Star Trek didn't have such a cool music? And that was it. I actually decided at the moment that I would compare Star Wars and Star Trek. I forgot the music. And uh, I, I was like, okay, I will focus on budgets and box offices and uh, 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 IMDB rating. So uh, now I know what I want to build. I kind of have this idea in my head already, uh, but uh, I would like to see it first. I need to draw it. And that leads me to the next slide where uh, I would like to tell you why the sketch is so important. Uh, so it clarifies your vision before you even touch Tableau. You can, uh, you can reposition and uh, resize uh, all the elements of your dashboard before uh, you do that in Tableau. It makes it much easier. It saves you a lot of time. And for me, I find it very helpful, uh, helpful especially because it keeps you on track. Once you have your sketch, once you, once you have your idea, you can always come back to it and uh, it will, uh, it will uh, remind you what you actually wanted to do. So this is my sketch. I'll just get a little bit of water. <clears throat> so this is my sketch. I did it in Excalibur, but I don't, well, you probably don't see it. So it was about Star Wars and Star Trek. So uh, it was obvious that the background will, will be very dark, like space. I wanted to show the, like, not time traveling, but uh, like these films are moving like a planet in the, in the space. Uh, so I'm showing for each film, uh, I'm showing box office, its budget, and the, little, uh, and the little bar here is actually the rating from IMDb. Uh, and I'm starting with Star Wars uh, because the film was first. Uh, Star Trek will be below, but in fact, Star Trek started before Star Wars franchise. So I just wanted to mention it here and give it a little, little bit of context. Uh, I, okay, uh, so I would like to, because I imagined this printed in some magazine on like double page or something, I said it was supposed to be static. So uh, I was like, the information about money won't be enough. So I need some story around. 
So I started with, uh, I'm starting with Star Trek. Uh, first information about first uh, Star Wars film. Uh, after that, there was this Star Trek film because Star Wars was a huge success. So Star Trek was hoping for something similar. Uh, here, some additional information. George Lucas is selling uh, his, uh, his uh, Lucas film to uh, Disney. And uh, in Star Trek, there was a change of the crew of the main characters, like the actors playing the uh, new crews. And uh, one interesting fact I found was that uh, in 2009, there was a film, uh, Star Trek Reboot, which was directed by J.J. Abrams, who actually directed later uh, the last trilogy of uh, Star Wars. He didn't direct all the films, but the first one and the last one. So I, I was like, okay, this is, this is my story. At the end, I'm just, uh, I just wanted to show some totals for offices and budgets and some average ratings for these franchises. <clears throat> okay. So I have my sketch. I, at this point, actually, I, I'm not sure how to build it, but <laughs> I like the challenge, but still we need to get some data. So we have this data set from IMDB. It's massive. Uh, I will probably have to use a uh, data source filter in Tableau and let in only Star Wars and Star Trek films. And other things I need to find uh, is budget and box office. And uh, I need to calculate, adjust, uh, I, I need to adjust uh, these box offices and budgets for inflation because we are talking about 45 years of uh, data. So it makes only sense. So it should be fairly simple calculation, but at the end, uh, I, I got the information about Star Wars from some website or from some fan site, similarly for Star Trek. Uh, I had worldwide, uh, worldwide box office and worldwide budget. I needed to calculate it. I needed to adjust it for inflation. So I just did it to uh, 10th month of 2023. Uh, for that, because I was really only with 22 films, I wouldn't choose this approach uh, for more data. But for 22 films, I just I just used uh, CPI inflation calcul calculator, uh, where, uh, for example, Star uh, Star Wars first film cost 11 million in 1977, and in October 2023 it would be. 58 million dollars. So this is the way, like very simply, I get the data about uh, about uh, budgets and box offices. I did the same for Star Trek, and uh, at the end, I used uh, Tableau Prep Builder to uh, merge this data to union these uh, tables, uh, rename all the all the uh, uh, all the films uh, because I needed them to be the same names. As in IMDb data set, there were some differences. So I did that and I, I'm i not going to Tableau Prep now, but I ended up with something similar to this table. And so at this point, I have my data collected. Yeah, let's get back to my presentation. So now is the this time, time for some action. We'll be using uh, Tableau and a little bit of Figma. <clears throat> So uh, this is this is a data source pane in a Tableau. Here we can see that I have two connections. One is to IMDb Movie uh, Movie and People uh, data set, and the other one is my with box offices. What I'm doing here, so I I, I brought in first the IMDb data set, and immediately I'm applying filter on a column title where I choose only Star Trek and Star Wars films. This will limit my data set to only 937 rows. So now into Tableau, it's not going to be two gigabytes. Uh, I'll be working with, but only a few megabytes of data, probably less. And I'm joining, I'm using inner join uh, with my Star Trek box offices data set here. So for each film, For each film, I got my box office adjusted for inflation and budget adjusted for inflation. So that was the first step. <clears throat> Next step, 
And now is the time to look at my sketch. So I would like to build this part. So only Star Wars first. So it will be a timeline. So the first thing I bring into the view, into the columns, right click on the year of release and continues. And now I see uh, only Star Wars and Star Trek films here, but I need only Star Wars. So next thing I need to do is create a filter, calculated field. It just says title contains words Star Wars. I'm sure it will be okay. If true, it will show me only Star Wars. So let me put it into the filters. And now I see only Star Wars. Next thing I want to build is, and if I go back to my sketch, I want to build this little bar, which will indicate the rating of the film. And farther from the line, better the rating. So I find my... And now I don't see uh, IMDb rating. I drag it to rows. This is not exactly what we need. So we will change to bar, make it a little bit thinner, actually much thinner. And now we have our ratings. <clears throat> for the circles, for these circles, it will be slightly more complicated, but not that much. I'm going to... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to add IMDb rating to rows again and change this to circle. Make it bigger, bigger. And now the size of the circles should be the outside size should be the uh, should be the uh, box office. So what I did here was that I brought in. Uh, measure measure values and I'm filtering only the values I want in the view and in my case in box office and budget still don't see uh, much of a difference but if I drag the measure values now onto the size it will change but I don't need some I need minimum in this case Okay, now we also already see that we have our budget in the middle and our box office outside. Uh, now it's time to color it. So we will bring our measure names onto the color, which will give different colors to box office and budget. And to prevent, because I will be duplicating this process for Star Trek also, and if I change the Star Trek, it would change me colors of Star Wars. So now for all marks, I need to bring in filter onto the detail and change it to color. I already set up the colors, so it's nicely done now. Now I will just dual access everything Access needs to be synchronized. And at this point, I feel like this is too high because I, I need some space above because there will be some annotations or uh, labels, but I don't need that much of a space here. So I'm, I'm going to edit the axis and give it a fixed value starting on rating 3 and finishing on rating, let's say, 12. So we have more space above. And on my uh, on my time axis, I want to see every single year. Okay, at this point, I can hide the x uh, hide this axis, and I can replicate the same thing for Star Trek. I rename the sheet. I will duplicate the sheet. Rename it. And here, just instead of filter true, I will choose filter false. And it will give me all, all Star Trek films. I already know I will have to later adjust the sizes because uh, Star Wars was uh, much more successful financially than Star Trek. So I will have to do that on the dashboard. 
but at this point I need to show header and reverse the axis. Now here and hide the header. So okay, so this is the main part of the dashboard. Uh, it's fairly easy to be honest. <laughs> And we go to the dashboard, we just, okay, this is not showing for some reason. So now I'll just bring everything in. And uh, it needs some adjustments. I won't, definitely want to use this legend. I, I won't use this, but I already prepared everything in here. So this is the final look of the, of the dashboard in Tableau. Uh, I edit all the text, starting with Star Trek uh, TV series. Uh, I edit text about Star Wars and Star Trek during the time. I have my totals at the back, but still I feel like it's too flat and I don't have my lines here. So uh, at this point, the best way what I found was to public uh, publish the workbook to Tableau Public. And from there, From there, this is the published uh, on Tableau Public, and from there, I will just download this as an image, and I will have to reconnect. Great. I will just download this as an image. Once downloaded, I'm going uh, to Figma, where I already put it. So here, I. It feels really flat, so I would like this middle part a little bit darker. Of, of course, I need to add some shading. Uh, I need to add some frames to my text. I want uh, my uh, Star Wars and Star Trek signs. I want my title. So I'll just show you quickly how I built some of it. So first thing, I will just cover over uh, the whole dashboard. I'll give it some color what I want. But in my case, I wanted gradient. Something like this. In the middle, it should be darker. On the edges, it should be a little bit lighter. So something like this, let's say. Now right click and I send it to the back. So I see my uh, print screen. And here on the print screen, I will draw everything what I missing in the visual. So for example, the blue line for Star Trek. I just give it some thickness, similar to the thickness of my chart uh, of my uh, bar chart. I give it a color I need. It will be the same as Star Trek. And I position it to the very place I need it. I do the same thing for I do the same, uh, same thing for a Star Wars timeline. I give it a yellow color, some thickness, position. And so on and so on. I create some title. I create boxes for my, for my text. In this case, I'm, I'm, I think I was using transparency, but it can be done in multiple ways. I want the corners to be really smooth, so not sharp. After I do everything here, I take my print screen, I just take it away. And it will leave me with my background, which I already have prepared here. Also, I created this little legend. Uh, because I wasn't happy with the one which uh, Tableau provided me uh, with. Uh, so this is from multiple objects and I'll bring it later to the view as a floating uh, picture. But once I have this, I will highlight everything. I'll group it, select and export it as JPEG or PNG uh, to my hard drive. From there, so this is, this is done. I can go back to my Tableau and drag in image. I usually do it with shift, so it's floating. 
I choose the image. You can notice that I this I did this background like 13 times before it was I, before I was happy with it. I choose the image. <clears throat> And now I just need to position it to the very top corner, a very top left corner, and give it the same size as my dashboard. So in my case, dashboard is ridiculously wide, 3930 pixels. And I'll give the same size to my background. At the same time, I will position it to zero, zero. And it was, oh, I already forgot, 3930, 920, 920. All right, now my background should cover the whole dashboard and it actually happened, good. So all I need to do now is to send it back. and the container which has the gray color should be now transparent. And that's it. So this is the way how I built visualization Star Wars versus Star Trek. The end. Live long and prosper, and may the force be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yaro. You just lit up the chat uh, in so many ways. People were really appreciative of everything you did with the great demo. Um, Thank you. Have, but which one does this belong to, Star Trek or Star Wars? I'm going to offend so many people. Yeah. OK, I know how to do this, so there you go. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, people appreciated the demo. The questions, uh, the comments mainly are towards how detailed your sketch was. Uh, so utilization of the tools was really well. Uh, it was great to see. Uh, your What was your data file in? It was a spreadsheet. It was an Excel spreadsheet, right? Uh, it was originally an uh, Excel spreadsheet, but uh, we are, uh, I was encouraged to use uh, Tableau Prep. So I did. Uh, so the final uh, budgets and box offices came as high profile as an, it was output from Tableau Prep Builder. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I created this uh, little Excel, this little join, joint, oh, sorry, union Excel uh, just for demonstration for today. But I did it actually in, uh, in Tableau Prep Builder. So it was high profile. Okay, there you go. That was the question. And my question to Yaro is how much time did this take you from the conceptualization of what you want to build to building it and publishing it? Uh, once I knew what I wanted to build, so I had sketched like in 10, 20 minutes, I believe. It was fairly quick. And to once I knew how to build it, it, it was it was very quick. The most of the time I spent on iterations with the background. So I wasn't happy with uh, some, uh, it, it just, yeah, I just wanted to be like really, really nice looking and really pleasant to look at. Uh, so it took me, as you saw, like 13 different backgrounds uh, before I found the right one and with the right spacing and everything. And I think altogether like four, four, six hours, uh, oh. maybe more. I, I honestly don't remember very well, <laughs> but. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Yaro, for uh, doing the presentation. Uh, if you could stop sharing, I'm going to yeah. hand it. Before I hand thank it you. over, uh, I think we are going to do a quick tug picture. So I'm going, I'm going to be the one who is taking the picture. So if everybody can look center and give me a big smile uh, when I say go. OK, go, people. Come on, I have like five screens, so my mouse is not finding the screen. Found it, all set, thank you. Now I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Agata and Lindsay. All right, hi everyone.
Um, it is my pleasure to introduce Lindsay Betzendahl. Uh, Lindsay is a partner and senior consultant at Health Data Viz and co-author of the book, Visualizing Health and Healthcare Data. She has a rich background in healthcare, quality analytics and innovation, and has spent the past 10 years perfecting her data visualization and design skills using Tableau and is a certified Tableau desktop professional and consultant. Lindsay started using Tableau in 2014 and Tableau Public in 2016, um, and she got involved in the greater Tableau community in 2018. She is a five-time Tableau visionary, a five-time Tableau Public ambassador, co-leader of the virtual healthcare tug, and has 14 Viz of the Days. Three of those um, were ones she actually developed for her clients. Um, Lindsay has a focus on human-centered design and development of custom dashboards that are both functional and beautiful. She enjoys challenging what Tableau can do technically and visually and is often heard telling clients anything is possible. Um, she loves using Figma to create, to create dashboard wireframes and improving her illustration and graphic design skills while tinkering around in the tool. And we'll get to see some of that today, which is awesome. Um, and so today she'll walk us through uh, building her Data Plus Movies Viz. Take it away, Lindsay. All right. Thank you so much. Let's see if I can. Hopefully, we're seeing nothing. And, <laughs> and something now, yes? Yeah, we can see cool. it. All right. Thanks so much, Agata, for that. Um, so I'm going to be sharing a bit about my Dables Movies Jim Carrey Viz. Uh, you'll learn a little bit about my design process and my love for comedy, particularly Jim Carrey, and how I came across or came to um, create this Viz. Um, oh, let me go out for a second. Just say anything else? No. Okay. So I'm Lindsay Betzendahl, and since uh, I got did a wonderful introduction, I don't have to say anything else other than some data, which just is about my name, because why not? Um, I don't know any other Lindsays. So I figured I'd show you why, because <laughs> if you are younger than me, <laughs> and that was the year I was born, literally the year uh, either right before or right after that peak. So Lindsay was super popular when I was born. Uh, you can see where the year 2000 is and where we are I think the last date of that is like two years ago. So if you are younger than I am, I could be the only Lindsay you know, because there's not that many uh, Lindsays um, that are born anymore these days. So take that with you. If you uh, don't learn anything else, you could say, you know, you know, Lindsay and hopefully the best one. Um, all right. So I'm going to talk about me, Tableau, Figma, and probably 40 hours with Jim Carrey. I'm probably exaggerating, but the reality is um, when I work in Tableau, and particularly when I get a little uh, heavy into the design, it takes a lot longer than one might expect. So I'll share a bit about my inspiration, uh, how I got the data on my story design, and some little snippets of the interactivity within the biz. So you all heard about the Data Plus Movies um, challenge. Uh, so Karen had approached, or kind of, or not necessarily approached, but I said I would kind of get into this. And I had probably, I don't know, maybe a week or two from when um, I was able to get the data until when kind of had to have it ready for the launch. And like I said, it took a lot longer than I would have expected. And that is not a fault of the Data Plus movie side. It's my, me and my process and circling in the wagon a bazillion times. But it was super fun to get into this because I don't actually watch a whole lot of movies. And so it's not necessarily a data set or a concept I had thought a lot about wanting to do. But it's always interesting to try to take a data set and figure out how and what you will do with it. So the data had, you know, as you know, millions of rows on the genre, actors in movies, roles, who they played, and then some of the IMDB measures like the ratings, how many votes were done, time of the movie and the uh, position of the actor or actress in terms of their billing um, from all the others. So tons of information. So at first I was like, I have no idea. So I grabbed the data set and the extract and you'll see in the, the little section, it is over 5 million rows of data. At the time, I didn't have my swanky new laptop that I just got a week ago. I had my old five-year-old laptop 
And so it did not really like this 5 million rows. In fact, my computer turned into the devil, particularly the Jim Carrey one, and uh, couldn't process it at all. So I had to think of another solution, which meant I sort of had to think about my story or what I wanted to try to find a, from the data set before I actually knew if the data was going to even support a story that I was imagining. Um, but I liked him, Carrie. So I figured we'll, we'll, it will start there. But I first want to preface with, I do have a lot of visits on my tablet public profile. Part of that is because I've had a number of years to build them up. I didn't make 200 in a year, though I think perhaps maybe it was Ant. There's Someone recently had like did like a hundred in a year. Um, I could be wrong with that. Um, but I don't always have immediate ideas for my visualizations. So if you don't either, um, you're in good company here. It often takes me a bit. Took a lot of searching in this particular case. Not because I didn't have a topic, but there's all so many pieces to inspiration for me, um, as well as design and analytics. So I'll talk a little bit about the inspiration and how it really came to be, because I don't think visits just, they don't come together usually, um, at least not for me. And so I don't want anyone to think that they do, because <laughs> it takes a while. So first, I thought about a number of recent conversations I had had. And frequently on social media, I'll post um, GIFs that use, uh, you know, quotes from movies, comedic movies, often Jim Carrey. So here's a few that I snipped. Um, from Twitter. And I thought, you know, I use these a lot. I also joke around a lot with a number of friends, including Kevin Flerlidge, where we have a back and forth about Jim Carrey's The Grinch movie. And is his Grinch the best one? Or is the other one the best one? And I always say it's the Jim Carrey one, and he thinks it's terrible. So we have that continued argument. And I thought, well, maybe I should see if Jim Carrey's movies are really all I think they're cracked up to be. The second inspiration was I I always do an image search and it doesn't necessarily have to be so specific. Like in this case, I did literally Google like Jim Carrey infographic or Jim Carrey header or whatever it was um, and ended up finding this. And you'll see how very similar it looks to the header of my actual visualization. I do this with everything often because you don't know for, for me, sorry, I don't know if it's going to be uh, the image, if it's going to be the colors, it's going to be the typography, it's going to be the layout. Is it going to be some little, um, design element that I hadn't thought of. It could be anything. So I don't always Google, again, the exact phrase I'm going to be using, but this is the image that I happened to do in this particular case. I thought, huh, this is cool. Keep in mind, at this point, I had no idea what I was visiting on other than it probably had to do with Jim Carrey. <laughs> so I started with the image first. Um, just to be completely transparent, like here, plenty of visits over the years I've done that almost look like exact replications, although I will be very clear, they are not. Um, but in some places it's because I saw, like in the top left, that actually happens to be a PowerPoint slide deck. And I was like, oh, I like these colors. I like some of this minimalism. And so I decided to use it for my viz on my art in my house. The one on the far right is the turbine powered. That is like exact from the perspective of that top part, but it was really because I wanted to learn or see or challenge myself if I could replicate that exact image completely on my own in Figma. So it was more of a learning opportunity, not like I snipped that image by any means. That is completely 100% redesigned from scratch by me. So all of these were to take pieces of it and think about what skill am I learning and um, you know is going to be new in my toolkit. The third part of inspiration for this particular viz was um, a recent client work that I did. Often if I do something for a client that then I can't share publicly, um, this one happens to be public, but this happens frequently. And then I'm like, you know what? I want to try that particular technique again in a public space. So I had done this exploding pie thing, which sounds completely ridiculous. Um, but I thought it was pretty cool the way I solved it. And so I wanted to try it in another um, situation. And I'll show it as well in a minute. And then the last piece of inspiration was different chart types. So in this case, um, I had recently uh, utilized Tristan's uh, B-Swarm, uh, I don't know what you call it, like generator, 
that he has online, which I'll show. And I'd seen a number of these and I've always thought they were kind of cool and pretty how these packed bubbles get really nice, nicely packed uh, next to each other. Um, and sometimes the data works for it and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the one in the middle is blue. I actually had done for work. And the top you'll see is Tristan's actual um, generator. So I was like, you know, I kind of want to do one of these two. So anyway, I had these four pieces of what I was thinking I was going to do, right? So I knew, okay, something about Jim Carrey with the movie data, maybe some yellow and blue as the design side of things with Jim Carrey at the top as he's Ventura. Um, you know, probably going to use this bee swarm and this like exploding pie coxcomb idea. And then I was just hoping that Jim Carrey's movies were going to be funnier than somebody else's. <laughs> um, so that's as far as I got. And then I thought, well, we're going to have to get to it here. So first for the data is, as I said, my computer freaked out. So I what I did is I actually um, created like a table in Tableau from the original data source and exported the table to Excel. So I, I slimmed it down. I picked, um, I think it's the seven, I think I have there, seven or eight, seven actors um, that I often think are pretty hilarious. Some of them tend to be in movies together. <laughs> And they always have really good gifts that I can, I can, uh, and memes that I can put up on social media. So I picked them and then I just explored the data that I needed from the movies plus data file, which got a smaller data source. Okay. Let me show. Uh, this is this it? Yes. Okay. So the first tool, as I was saying, I was using was um, from Tristan's site. So if you hadn't used this before, this is at lawdataviz.com. You can create an account. Some of his things are paid, some are not. This happens to be the Bee Swarm one. So what I did is I took that data that I downloaded from um, the extract, from the Data Plus movies, and then I had to do a little tweaking in it to bring it into this Bee Swarm. Because my original thought was, which you saw here, was that I would show all these different actors and show kind of their timeline and the different movies they had over time and then the rating. My husband says this looks like frog eggs, which now that I saw them the other week in a pond while hiking with my children, he's 100% correct. They totally look like frog eggs. And I was like, oh, I don't know if this is working correctly. Not to mention, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of variability in the ratings. Um, and I wasn't sure it was going to fit my story. But initially that is what I was thinking I was gonna do. So when you upload the data into Tristan's generator, I've already updated the data that I actually did use. Uh, you can pick what you want for the X axes. It pulls all the measures that you have. So I have my year of release. So you can see already, it already shows the different movies from these actors. Like, you know, there's Adam Sandler. This one is Will Ferrell, right? And then on the Y axis, what I did is I created, um, I created a separate y-axis in the tab in the Excel file so I could separate these people out because uh, the generator has to do it by a measure, not I couldn't just put the person's name. So I just created um, you know like a one through six type of separator. So here it gets my separation of the different actors, and I can change the size of this by um, the rating. And this is essentially what I came up with, and I wasn't terribly happy with how the data ended up really showing once I put it in here. But I'd already done it and I thought, well, you know what? This will still be a good way to at least show the data um, at the top of the viz just for a summary for Jim Carrey. So although I thought I was gonna use all of it, I did not in the end. So that got me to most of the data. So now I started thinking about design. Now. Sometimes when I get stuck, I'll go back to the design part of things because it gets me just in a different space from than analytics and Tableau and I'll just get into Figma and start mucking around or whatever. So I had this image and I really wanted to use the top part of it, particularly with the way that that title was laid out. I'd never done the sideways thing. I thought about how it was interesting to put data like at the same level as the um, title and this really big band of information, uh, summary information, and then have some of the um, deeper analysis below it. So 
I originally thought, well, you know what? I'll use the image of Jim Carrey. I can just get that off of uh, IMDb. It could be another place. Um, but turns out as um, I spoke to Karen a bit about this and, you know, I couldn't really use it for this purpose because it was I, I didn't have the license to use the image, even though it's everywhere on the internet. You still can't be doing that, right? So I was like, all right, well, shoot. Can't make it exactly like the design inspiration. So it's like any individual in uh, 2024, I turned to AI. <laughs> so um, using Mid Journey, I started playing around with, well, what kind of image can I create that's sort of like it that then I can modify? I went through a lot of iterations because none of them are going to actually look like Jim Carrey. Um, and you can see some of these. This One of these looks like a whole different actor. Right? The one that's in a... I don't know the Marvel movies or what have you. I can't remember his name now. But um, anyway, so this is kind of where it started with um, getting some ideas. But ultimately, this the one was kind of the best one that I came up with, or that AI came up with. And I had to figure out how to turn him into Jim Carrey. <laughs> so let me move into Figma real quick. Uh, where's my Figma? It is... All right, so we'll start with this. This is what I was working with. So I'm not gonna go into too much of this for the time purposes, but ultimately these are all the layers that I ended up using um, to create the final image. And what I was really going for is not only for it to look like Jim Carrey, but I was also wanting to have this secondary part of his arm kind of reaching out out of the woods over like the title and like, really making it feel like a lot, like it was alive. Um, so the, the biggest part to doing this, and I also wanted to give it this like grainy look. So I'll show you that too. So ultimately I had this image and most of it was pretty good, except for the face. I was not going to be getting away that this didn't look like Jim Carrey. So what I did instead is I snipped off Jim Carrey's head. Uh, to do this, I use the pen tool in Figma, and if I get really close, I mean, you could see, I'm not going to really do it, but essentially make an, an image or a shape around his face. I'll just leave that right now. Nope. Don't need it. And then um, once it's filled in, let me bring this ahead of him. I'll try to line it back up. Uh, there's a button called creating a mask. And if you ever use Illustrator or anything like this, you'll, you know how this works. And it just basically uh, cuts off his head <laughs> for lack of a better example. Um, so that's how I got his head separated out. Now, when I put it on top of here, there were some parts that didn't quite work out. You'll see, you know, he doesn't quite line up. There's some glasses that whatever. So what I did is I added a couple other pieces to this that um, helped kind of fade out and add a little hair and um, some different shading to different areas of this. The second thing that you can't really see because it's, um, it's actually this, this is called noise. Um, so I have an image but when I put it over it, you'll see it if I zoom in really closely. There's all these little like kind of pixelated type things. So I added this noise over it to kind of make it feel a little like older and kind of you know, a little fuzzier in the um, from the image perspective. So once I had that and all these pieces all together, the last part I had to do is cut out his arm. We're doing a lot of cutting Jim Carrey into pieces apparently. Um, but I did the same concept with the mask. Um, which cuts off or separates out his arm. So then you'll see that here. And now that I had these two pieces together, um, the added body and the arm, I could place these all together. And on my layers, you'll see I have, um, you know, I have his body. Oh, that's actually his arm. That's his arm. And the layers are just that this one is now over this blue one and this is behind it. So I have them just layered in, in order and that way I can get his hand kind of reaching out over the page. But all that, you know, goes to say, it took a while for me to even like get to this point. I make this look quite quick, but 
like again, I, I went around a lot on um, what to do for this. Uh, let's go back. Okay. Then as I was doing one of the charts, which I'll uh, show in a second, um, happens to be this one. I thought, you know, I needed to add a little more pizzazz to some of these charts. That none of the charts or the, um, you know, analysis is like overly complicated, but I wanted to really call out in this particular one, which dot was Jim Carrey. And I thought no better than also going back to this and getting into my design side of things, which I enjoy doing. Um, this particular one, again, I had gotten this, made this image in AI, um, but it was very bright. And it turned out I wasn't going to use these colors by the time I got around to it. So I wanted to modify it. Um, what I did is I took the image and I put it into an SVG converter online. So I changed the PNG to an SVG. So now you can see this is in a complete vector, which means I'm able to change the colors of it. So I first did that, um, but because of one whole image, one whole vector, I don't have the ability to like edit different parts of it in this for this vector. Um, so what I did is I took the original image, I changed the luminosity, so it is black and white. I, again, I framed at him out with the mask so that it's not in the right spot. There you go, you know, like that or whatever. Um, did the same thing for another mask where I have a mask of the circle behind him. And then go back. And then I put him in a circle. And then I added this on top, which you'll see when I go in here. Uh, the one, oh, that's a lot of vectors. A lot of pieces in here. There we go. Um, ends up bringing in this, the, the, the kind of the, the blue onto the gray. So it gives us this kind of, kind of cool look um, that I used in the actual build. So again, just a lot of mucking around, but you know, that's how kind of creativity strikes and you learn different things along the way, which is really valuable to me. Um, so then I put it into my shape repository, pulled it back into Tableau and used that in the part of the analysis where I was looking at all those seven actors um, across four different decades. And so for each of their movies across the decades, I got their kind of average uh, IMDb rating and then broke out all that data into percentiles. So the bar is from the 25th to the 75th percentile, I think is what I ended up doing. Yeah. Um, and then the average is in the middle. So the moral of this data analysis is that at three out of the four decades, Jim Carrey was at the top end of that 90th or 75th percentile. Um, and there are only a handful of times or two other actors, um, in two other years that had a higher than him, um, or higher than the 75th. And there was obviously in the 2010s, um, he didn't do as well, but I'll take that as a fluke year where he was trying something different and it just didn't work. He should stick with the comedies. That was my analysis on that. Um, so the overall story I ended up pulling together with all these different charts is that I summarize all of his information first and foremost, leading with Jim Carrey, looking at all of his movies over the course of the decades that he has been an actor, and then categorizing them from that blue and the orange, I did end up changing it from yellow to orange, um, if it was a comedy or not. So the orange ones are ones that were not comedies, so you can see the infrequency of those. So again, starting with that summary, and then I had a number of summary stats about how many titles, right? which was the highest, um, you know, which ones had the most votes, how, what percent were comedies and et cetera. And then some information about him. And then I went into looking at again across the decades, as I just mentioned, um, in comparison with the other actors. I'm actually going to move into uh, Tableau to show these. Um, well, I'm going to keep it here for now. So here you'll see these are all his movies. The background size is the number of votes. The regular one is the um, rating. And then we have some interactivity, just some hovering, some additional details. So who is this guy? Ah, Jack Black. You know, I think that was all of his um, Kung Fu Panda movies did pretty well, the kiddos. 
and Steve Carell in 2010s. Um, where are these down here? Oh, okay. Some other early actors. Um, so you can see his kind of average ratings is around a six. Um, then in order to do some a little bit more comparison between him and the actors, I pulled out their top three movies. So each actor's top uh, first, second, and third most highly rated movie um, with the actual rating and the title and then coloring it again with the theme showing the ones that are were not um, comedies. So interestingly enough, uh, Jim Carrey's highest rated movie was not a comedy. In fact, I've never seen it, although I think it's, I think people do agree that it's pretty good. I don't know why I haven't seen it yet. I probably should. But again, as I led with, I don't watch a lot of movies. Probably why I haven't seen it. Um, and then all the others. So um, I use some index calculations in the background just to uh, isolate these. Um, again, pretty simple. Some details. And then lastly, as I said, I wanted to get in this concept of using this chart type. So... This ended up proving to be a little trickier than before because in the original build that I had done, uh, I don't remember which screen it's on, this one. And the original one I did for a client, oh, it's gonna reload, of course. They didn't have, they actually didn't have data. They just had a text. It was a category and a subcategory for all intents and purposes. And, but they wanted it to be interactive. And I was like, I'm not really sure um, what to do here. I had a number of, uh, concepts that I thought about. But at the end of the day, I ended up with this where they have their category and upon hover, you can essentially read all the subcategories within it. Um, so I liked this idea when I came about it with this kind of exploding pie. Um, and I have another example and a blog post on it that we can sure, certainly um, use if you have interest in this for whatever reason to use this completely ridiculous, unnecessary chart type. But um, I also did it for my example of uh, resolution. So um, by different categories and then each piece within it. So at that point, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do this, right? Well, this is where probably uh, like 20 of the hours got sunk. Maybe not quite. And part of that is because I was going to not just use a pie. I wanted to use the Cox comb, which shows the number of um, overall movies per decade. So here, Ben Stiller has 20, you know, 14. You know, he just got started. Here's two, right? So the size of the slice is the number of movies. But I wanted people to get to all the details of every actor because I did not have room ever anywhere else in the page, nor did I need, necessarily need it. But I wanted to be able to still provide all the movies and their uh, ratings. So instead of exploding, because technically the cost comb has already exploded out, I essentially now have instead um, a parameter action that further breaks down uh, this polygon into multiple polygons that provide the details of every single movie. Uh, and they are sized by the rating, although because the difference in ratings are not so significant apparently across these seven actors, um, this, these little bands don't look terribly different, but they actually are. Um, so for any of these, you can click on another one and see again all the movies across all the different people. So I know it's kind of small, but that was um, what happened behind the scenes. Here it is kind of on the other end of things. There are a number, I'm not going to go into calcs, not only because of time, but also it's just a lot of detail. People can certainly um, download it if you want and check out my blog on it. But it's just kind of a lot of mental math and figuring out how was I going to get Tableau to do what I want. And sort of as, as I got to said in the beginning, ultimately, it's like if I want to get something done, I will just completely uh, not stop until I figure out the solution because um, I always think there is going to be one. It just might take longer than you expect. Um, so that is that. Um, I did have to, uh, you do have to uh, do some data densification, which is really just unioning the data on top of each other to get all the marks and the curves to the polygons. Um, but again, because I had a concept that then I realized I wanted to modify, it took me a bit longer. But in the end, I was pretty happy with uh, how it turned out. Uh, I'm not that one. 
I've kind of already said most of this in when I was explaining it to you all. So yeah, so that's it. That is the final viz and how, again, I probably spent 40 hours with Jim Carrey despite only making like, I don't know, how many charts here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or chart, 10 charts or so. Um, but uh, it was it was exciting to kind of get in here. And I think I proved that um, Jim Carrey is pretty funny. And um, in general, people enjoy his movies, at least in comparison to some of the other funny actors that I know. So that is, where's my, there we go, that's it. If you want to connect with me or anything like that, and I can drop any other links and whatnot in the chat. That was great, Lindsay, thank you. Um, I dropped some of your links also in the chat. Um, everybody was definitely freaking out about all your Figma magic. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting yeah. out Jim Carrey's face and arm. That was kind of, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always fun. So I spent a lot of time in both tools, but they go well together. So yeah, I shared you. your videos on how to use Figma. So cool. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Are we ready to draw for some swag? Let's do it. All right. Here we go. Uh, if you're one of the winners, please email tableaupublic.tug at gmail.com and I will email you the form to select your prizes. But here we go. Let's click to win. This is everybody who signed in today for today's meeting. We have, oh, Brian stole it away. Brian Contini. Kintani. And for the next one, we have Mark Okafor. All right. Congratulations, Brian and Mark. So please email me and we will uh, get you your swag. So... Next month, we're looking forward uh, to April 11th. We have a great lineup of Tableau Public authors for you. Jane Kamada is the Student Iron Viz winner, and she will be in our community spotlight. Tanya Lumskaya will be our Global Art Trade Viz of the Day presentation, and Chimdi Wosu will be our Visit of the Day call center dashboard presentation. So please RSVP uh, for next month, and we look forward to seeing you there. Finally, if you want your own Visit of the Day, uh, just do like Lindsay did. Build a Viz that is timely and topical, highlights new features, spotlights the diverse Tableau community, includes a novel chart type or tableau trick, communicates a key insider story, and most of all, make it visually stunning. So thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see everyone next month. If you enjoyed this, please tell your data fam friends. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Carol. Thanks for having me.